What's up, everybody? All right, it's live time. Yes, I am live. Bamo, I'm live over here. We're good. All right, so this is update 23, I believe. Uh, popper update. Okay, so some of you were very concerned about my update 22. All right, there's a reason why I do everything. First of all, no, my second installment I keep talking about isn't going to be in this one either. Lots of things happening, and it's just taking a lot of time. But we're shooting for a week or two. Um, it's looking good. Tim is definitely working his butt off. I have been too. So we'll get there. But some of you are concerned about update 22. All right. Why, why did you do that, Russ? Why are you searching for random things? Well, here's the deal. A long time ago, uh, thanks to Easy, he put this together as we had questions and wanted them answered different tests of things to do, okay? This is from rwgresearch.com. You can uh, go find it there on the forums. It's linked to the server. Actually, it's right there if you want to go if you want to go look it up. Okay? So here's the deal. I'm going to go through here and just pick some tests that I have time to do today. Well, guess what one of them is? Exactly what I did with the balloon. Except without the aluminum foil, of course, but I wanted to hook up the balloon to see what happens. So now we got some answers there. I'm going to read you what it is, and then uh, we'll, we'll do some tests. So this is number three on this sheet. Um, gas power or magnetic flux? Basically, the theory a long time ago with uh, the ring on the uh, AC shooting off. Is this sort of that, or what is going on? Use a balloon on one of your entries. Uh, and when it pops, see if the balloon expands or what happens. Okay, that's what we did. We know it expands. Um, basically, that's the entire test. Alright. One way to distinguish if the force that moves the piston after the spark is fired is due to increased gas pressure or under the influence of some sort of varying electromagnetic force. Okay. So that's the test we're doing. We're doing number three. Just for your guys' pure reference. You can read the entire thing. Alright, so here's what I've done. I did the same setup as we have last time. Alright. And I'll throw a quickie update in there. Um, I did modify just two things. One of them is in here. Move this trash can. I had it because I was drilling holes. Alright, one of them is here. This is a 120 ohm resistor. Thermal resistor. Oh, it's a wire wound resistor. And I've got it hooked up so whenever I turn the e-stop button on here, what it does is it shorts out this, which is connected directly to that. Okay. That's all it does. So my safeties are now built in. I got rid of the, uh, right there, the big resistor pack for now. Heating coil is actually what it is. So that's a quick update. The other quick update is that I've added this to my system. <clears throat> this is something that I've taken out of something. It's just a uh, EMI filter. And uh, basically, it'll help me from getting any feedback back into my system. Um, I've also added this, which is just a uh, piece of ferrite cord you see putting around cords. It kind of helps with, the, uh, with any sort of high voltage spike. It helps suppress that. So those are the two quickie updates. All right, so back to the test. I've got a balloon here. It is barely filled up, as you can see. We're at just, you know, right at atmosphere, basically. And this is cold. I haven't fired this puppy at all. So I filled this up with, uh, let's see what I do. Put five of them in there. 560. So let's, uh, Uh, 300 cc's, I think, of gas, of helium. I believe that's right. Can't do my math in my head. Late night. Alright, so, <clears throat> basically I'm just going to fire this thing. We're going to see what happens. Um, that is all that's going to be happening. I'm going to start out with a lower pressure. And let me charge this up. <clears throat> at a lower voltage. And that's 200 already. Alright, that's 200 volts. We'll stick with 200 volts for a little while. I did slow the charge rate. 
and so it's going to fire a little bit slower see I'll get you a little bit closer but I still want to be able to see the piston move how's that alright so again this is cold I need to go get my thermometer this time and I'll give you guys some heat measurements but this is cold so I'm just going to fire it once and, uh, and we'll see what happens Not a whole lot, huh? Try again. No, it didn't fire that time. So this thing definitely moved. It's not really all that hot. Obviously not yet. Now I'm not at full power. Very interesting. Let's go a little bit higher power. You guys can, should be able to see everything all right. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go with a higher power. We'll go with full power. which is 330 volts. Actually, I'm slightly high, but that's fine. Okay, so this is at uh, full power, 330 volts. Let's see what happens. It's not coming off the table. There must be a lot of expansion here. It must be real fast. I can't hardly really see it. I'm going to hold it down. <clears throat> hold it down again. There's definitely some force there. <clears throat> But it's definitely not as much as I'm used to. I'll shut this off for a second and see what the force is. Yeah, about the same. I'm going to cut the bust of air. Oh, it's coming out of the top. <laughs> I was like, where is that coming from? <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to auto fire this puppy. It's not fast, it's a very slow cycle. Let's see what happens. Hmm, didn't fire. Oh, I think I'm high. Oh, it just looks like I blew a hole. Here's what I'm going to do. So for a very long time, I looked and looked and looked. And guess what I found? Check it out. It's not a bed spring. It's a, a really springy spring, okay? What this is, this come out of a, a really, really, really big regulator that I found in the trash at work. I had just this gut feeling to take it apart. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just did. And this is what I found in there. And guess what? This is like exactly what the doctor ordered. So let's hook this up, and then we got a little bit of spring tension so we can push it back down. So we'll be back. Alrighty then. So I haggardly have this on here. This is all I got with me at the moment. Now I did bring out my uh, temperature gun, so I'm going to take some readings and I'll just say them off as we, uh, as we fire this thing repetitively. There isn't much spring tension on here. Like really, none hardly at all. Just enough to keep it down. So let's uh, auto fire this thing. Just see what happens. We 
where it's 79, that's 90 degrees. 111, 115, 115, 118, this is Fahrenheit by the way, 122, 125, 130, oh, misfire, that was a good one, misfire, my thing's messed up. Transformer. It sure does sound different. Boom. All right. I didn't get near as hot as the fast rapid tests, but it's cooling real fast. It's at 107. Hundred degrees. Let me fix this thing. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> keep going. That's still at room temperature. Misfiring somewhere, something shorting out. Spring was making that funny noise out here. Keep this fire. I hear it shorting out against something. There we go. Something was shorting out. Not sure what it was. I can hear it though. Hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty-five, hundred and forty-five, hundred and fifty-five, hundred and sixty, hundred and sixty-one. This fire. All right, let's speed this thing up. Let's speed it up, see if we get a different result. Alright, try it again. It's definitely not full power. Short, something short out over there. One eighty. One eighty five. One ninety five. Two hundred. Busted my bullet. Alright. Now we're going to fill it back up again. about 200.
All right, I'll refill this. All right, so that concludes test number three. I think we ruled out what's happening. Um, obviously, it's not electromagnetic at, as far as completely anyway. So uh, let's see what other tests we got today, shall we? I think we're going to try some feedback current. All right. All right, guys. So this is number two. The test is number two. It's labeled feedback current. I didn't even read it. How can we get feedback current? Basically is what it's stating. Uh, so here's what I've got. I've got here a pretty big capacitor. It's a pretty big thing. It takes a lot to charge this thing up. For what I'm doing. 40 volts DC. Seven, 78,000 microfarads. It's a big, big boy. Okay. Um, I currently have the pat mixture mixing. We'll see if that helps. I have no idea. I am going to fill this thing up with that today and see what happens. But for now, we've got the helium in here still. Now, something very, 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 very strange just happened. I was trying to hold this down with my finger, and it flew up, and my finger got between here. And I didn't feel the greatest, but it didn't hurt me. It scared me. And then, shortly after that, a giant spark flew off here. I have no idea what happened. Another one of those anomalies. I don't know if it came from somewhere else, but it literally arcs. So what I did now is I grounded these things out. Okay, all this stuff is connected back down to the base. And then I've got the ground wire coming off the piston head back over here to my capacitor. Now, this doesn't matter. I can put this anywhere. That's just where I temporarily have it because I wanted to make sure this is actually grounded um, to this. And I did check voltages here and see if I could get anything. I didn't see anything. Um, I'm not sure what happened. But for all int intensive purposes, um, I've tried a bunch of different stuff. Let me set this down. I'll show you what I've tried. All right, so I tried connecting to the buckets, across the buckets, didn't get anything. Tried connecting to the base and one of the positive poles here, the base and the negative poles. Um, I tried earth ground, didn't do anything. The only way I can get this to work is either if I have a positive connected to the positive and then the, the base, the chamber is grounded, or the base is connected to the negative, or the, the cap is connected to the negative and then the positive is connected to the base. I still get a charge. I need to switch those and see if I get the same charge. I haven't tried that yet. But just for all intensive, intensive purposes, I've got right here uh, a CD player basically is all this is that's a little motor probably about three to five volts probably about three three something volts all right the first thing I'm going to do is just let you watch the meter okay I'm just going to read voltages right off here I'm just going to fire this once and we'll see what kind of voltage we get and it has to recover Two volts, not a whole lot. I'll let it rapid fire a few times. Three volts. Five volts. 
seven volts. Okay, so you get the idea. So I'm going to discharge these capac this capacitor here. It's a pretty big boom, actually. All right, we're at zero volts. I'm going to hook up this little motor. Very crappily. I'm going to fire it again. Watch what happens. Okay, so we're obviously getting something. Now I don't know what what uh, Bob Rotor is using on his, but I'm not using a very very powerful uh, motor. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this on auto fire and let it fire a few times. Oh, we'll kick the camera. There, and then in my light here, as you can see it's spinning. Okay, so the voltage, you're not going to see a voltage here unless I disconnect this motor. Because this thing's soaking up all the voltage. No, this isn't touching. So, you see it works. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to disconnect this motor. I'm going to fire this real fast a whole bunch of times. Put the charge on all the time. Alright, so we are getting a voltage. We're up to 15. Now this little booger will spin. Okay. The point here is that we're getting something. Now, like I said, I tried a bunch of different stuff. It really varies. Now let me let me switch these leads around just so I can prove that I've done it on camera and you guys see it. So I'm taking off the piston so it's not grounded anymore. I'm going to hook up the positive back to the piston, the negative to the negative of the caps. I will hook this ground lead back up. Alright, so what I've done is I've hooked the positive up there. Oh. Watch what happens. Still, still works. It almost looks like it works better that way. Do one, one more fire here. Let's see what we can get our voltage up to. Oh, 
And where are we at? 16 volts. It's about the same. So let's uh, discharge this. Let's hook up this some other way. Just for fun. Let's isolate these two. I don't know if this is grounding or not. We're just going to have to guess it's, it's not. Let's try it a couple times. i got to love my on button. So, nothing. Alright, let's go uh, let's go from a bucket to the ground. I don't see anything happening. Let's go uh, from bucket to bucket. I don't see anything happening. Go from a positive to one of the buckets. Got a little of something. Not 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 near as much. <clears throat> if I connect this thing to ground, we get a lot better, a lot better reaction. Maybe, maybe not. Hook it back to a bucket. Alright. Now here's the interesting thing. Let's try this. I haven't done this yet. Let's connect the positive to the negative. On the capacitors and the ground of this unit. Look at that. It's going the other way. Okay, which isn't good on this capacitor, but that just proves the fact that we have polarity. Let's switch it back. Yep, we have polarity. All right, that's a good thing. That's really, really interesting. Let's see if we can. Uh, well, we know it's native. Let's try the opposite. Let's go with that on ground and this on negative. Yep. We have a negative potential. Switch it. Switch it again. And just try the high voltage just to see if we get anything. Okay, we'll short this thing out. Alright, here we go. High voltage only. Nah, nothing. A little bit of capacitance? Nope. A lot of bit of capacitance? Yep. Okay, so. If you look at some of Bob's videos, not really sure 100% where some of his stuff is connected. But we can only guess. And we can only test. So now one of my viewers asked me, what are you getting out of the coils? Ah, that's a good idea. Let's check it out. Let's, let's hook up something to a coil and see if we get anything different. Okay, so I currently have a bridge rectifier between the coil and the capacitor. Let's see what happens. I haven't tried it. Nothing out of the coils. 
There's your answer. It was a good thought. Now, let's leave the bridge rectifier in there. And uh, try connecting some of this back to a separate system here. Let's uh, see if we can get more out of it, basically. Not very good. Okay, let's switch these. Let's see if it's any better. Not really. But that proves that our connections are good. I'm going to switch back out. Try it again here. All right, so there is some feedback testing, OK? Again, earth ground doesn't help. I tried it. Actually, it's a ground back to my house, but it should be connected to earth ground. I might need to double check that. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to speed this system up. And we'll see if we can get a faster speed here, higher voltage. Granted, this isn't enough to run anything. I mean... This, this isn't any power, really. Point being, we're seeing something. Because I tried this before and couldn't get anything. Now, just for fun, let's go with a smaller capacitor. Just to see what happens. Smaller capacitor. Looks like the bigger capacitor actually does better. So maybe the more capacitance we have, the better it captures it. I don't know. But I'm going to switch back out. I like the bigger one better. But just so you see it, there it is. All right. I'm going to fill this up with the pat mix. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. So we're going to fill this bad boy up. Already got a nice vacuum. The gauge is actually cold now that I've been pulling the vacuum. Oh, yeah. Alright, we're going to fill this up with the pat mixture that we know of. Anyway.
Okay, set this on the floor so it doesn't fall over. Because it's a little knob baby compared to that big, big one. We're actually almost at like 4 PSI. Alright, I am going to put my little shield up. Just because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to die. Okay. You guys ready? I need to get more tight, huh? Uh, you can see everything all right there. Alright. Firing it just once. is not violent like it usually is. We're going to put this on auto and over it. See how much see how much voltage we get. any better or any worse. Three volts. Five volts. Six volts. Eight volts. Seems like sometimes a shorter pulse actually does better. volts, 15 volts. Okay, have we seen enough? I don't know. Let's crank up the voltage. Our meter is not reading right. I don't think we're getting the high voltage in there. See what we can get our voltage up to. Eleven volts. Let's switch this again. Oh, scared me. And see what we get now. Alright, see 
these would actually work better. Like this, in my opinion. Wow. Alright. That's all I got for you. Show wise, I don't know. No one else, no one else is chilly. The gauge looks like it goes up about 10 psi. Definitely not near as violent. The whole system just isn't violent compared to uh, compared to any of the other gases I've tried. Maybe the coils will help. Okay. All right. What have we learned? Actually, we learned quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Recycle. Actually, if you recycle, you'd be surprised how much stuff you can come up with. Okay. That's all I got for you. I don't have anything else, I guess. Um, quickly, let's read the temperature. Ninety-four degrees max. 90 degrees 93.5 okay so even though that the balloon does expand earlier that we've learned uh, and if there is heat in there it doesn't really transfer it's, the whole process stays pretty cool in my opinion I don't know we did get a little bit of feedback um, which is nice to see and uh, the pat mixture that I have we did roll it, we mixed it up the best we can, and I got the exact same reaction as I did before. I did, however, take off the gases while the cylinder was standing up, which means we should have just got helium if the gases would have layered like we think they are. If that's the case, we should have seen the exact same amount of reaction as with our other helium. I didn't see that. That tells me that we do have a, a good mix of gases. We just don't know how well. That's a good thing, actually, now that I think about it. That's a really good thing. Um, I do want to try another test, but it'll probably be another video, because this one's getting very long, I'm sure. So we'll, uh, we'll do that another time. We'll see what happens. All right. Peace out. See you on the next update. Russ out. RWGResearch.com. Believe. Okay. Got it. This is true. Just remember that. Peace.